instructor, English teacher. Today we are going to see uh, a model exam which is taken from Addis Ababa uh, City Educational Bureau ch Telegram channel. Uh, I'm going to go through all the questions starting from the first section, grammar section one, as you can see. Uh, section one is grammar. We will proceed the other sections next time. But for today, uh, from section one, I have uh, taken the first five questions, five, the first six questions for the first round, and we'll proceed to the other questions. Well, let's start. The first question reads out, she gave Dash all the money to the poor and the needy. Now, whenever you read any question in grammar, the first thing that you have to know is to try to guess from which grammar aspect the question is from. To do so, uh, just look through all the choices given. Okay? So, uh, and the word that you can see from the blank, I mean, before the blank space is uh, gave. And what is missing here, according to the, the given answer choices, what's missing is adverb particle. So this question is from a uh, phrasal verb. So you need to know what phrasal verb, just a quick, uh, a quick discussion of phrasal verb. So a phrasal verb is a verb which is formed from at least two uh, words, two words. The first one is a hate. We call the first one hate, and the second word tail. And the first word, which is a hate, is always a verb, and the second word is either a preposition or it is a adverb particle. Okay, adverb particle. So. A verb plus preposition or a verb plus other particle gives us uh, a phrasal verb. Now, what we are going to look for from the given answer choices is to a preposition or other particle that uh, completes the hate word gave and give contextual meaning, okay, and fills the flow of or, the, or completes the idea of the sentence, okay? So now let's see one by one. Gave out, okay? Gave out is, has so many meanings, but the first two meanings of gave out means, gave out means deliver, okay? Deliver or uh, submit. Or gave out means uh, stop functioning or cease functioning. There are a lot of meanings of gave out, but these are enough for this discussion. And gave in, gave in means either surrender or uh, stop again. Giving means stop, okay? Stop or surrender. We have no uh, phrasal verb with gave with su. So the first word that you uh, cancel out or omit it out should be su and the rest will be compared. And give away means give something as a gift, okay? Give something as a gift. It can be a money, it can be object, anything to give away means to give something as a gift. Now let's see which one fits the context. She gave Dash all the money to the poor. She gave all the money to the poor and the needy. So it must be giving something or giving money as a gift. So our answer should be D because to give away means to give something as a gift. So she gave all her money for the poor and the needy, or to the poor and the needy as a gift. Okay, that's our answer. Let's proceed. Question number two. You can hardly avoid dash her if you both working in the same office. You can hardly avoid dash her if you both working in the same office. A, to meet, B, meet, C, for meeting, D, meeting. Now this question is again from uh, uh, as I told you before, the grammar aspect this question is from is uh, from uh, verbals. Okay, I hope you know what verbals mean. They are special form word classes uh, which are derived or taken from uh, a verb. So verbals are not tense verbs because they don't show number, they don't show tense. Okay, they don't show tense. So what we are looking for here in the missing part 
is the verbal that follows the verbal void. There are few verbs that are always followed by gerund. There are few verbs that are always followed by participle. There are few verbs that are always followed by infinitive. Infinitive, both with to or without to. So, where do we find a void? That's a question here. Okay, a void is in the list of verbs that always uh, followed by uh, a gerund. Okay, a gerund. Now let's go through the answer choices. A is an infinitive to meet, so it is not our answer. It's an infinitive. We are looking for here gerund. Okay, we are looking for a gerund. So avoid. I mean, uh, to meet is an infinitive. Meets here, it is a both tense verb. This is a tense verb, plus it is also a verbal. Okay? When meet it is a verbal, it is infinitive without the preposition to. When meet it is a tense verb, now it shows time plus number. So we use the verb meet with a second person plural, you, you meet. First person singular, I, I meet, or we meet, both singular and plural, and third person plural, they meet. So it goes with I, we, you, and they. So it shows number, plus it is the present form. It shows also time. So it is both tense verb and verb, uh, verbal, so we don't choose this one because we are looking for a gerund again. Here are two gerunds for meeting and meeting. Now, what is the mistake here in choice C is the preposition for. So we use preposition before gerunds for a special meaning. Okay, for a special meaning. Unless for a special meaning, we don't use uh, any other verb form or, for that matter, any preposition or adverbial particle before the gerund. So our only answer would be uh, meeting D. Okay. So a gerund is a verb for that takes an energy or it is a verbal noun that takes an ing at the end, so it is verb plus ing. There is no prefix or there is no suffix. So verb plus ing is a German form, and that's the verb form that we look for among the given answer choices, and that's answer D. D is our answer. Let's proceed, and question number three. The dash you prepare for the exam, the dash mark you get. Now when you see this, I think you can clearly see two equivalent expressions, two equivalent structure. The first structure, the dash you prepare for the exam, and next again, it starts by the dash mark you get. This is again taken from the grammar aspect which says uh, parallel comparison or double comparison, okay? Double, double comparison. In double comparison, uh, we have, uh, as you can see, it is double here. The structure is double, as you can see, it's parallel or equivalent structure in both clauses. In the first clause here, the dash you prepare for the exam, the dash mark you get. So what's missing here is the adjective or the adverb in the blank space. So this adjective, the form of these two adjectives, must be parallel or double, or must be the same. So the structure is this. Uh, you can take so the plus uh, less or more, okay? The less or the more plus, then we take uh, a noun here, okay? Or subject verb structure, or in short, close, okay? You can take close here, then the next. The next, the same structure follows. The plus less. The second, the second clause. More plus noun plus close. So, usually double comparison shows the, the gradual increase or the, the gradual decrease of something. When something is getting uh, more and more uh, say bad or getting more and more 
uh, good, we use such kind of structure, okay, double comparison, to indicate the gradual increase or the gradual decrease of something, okay, or estates of something. This is one uh, uh, structure, or we can use, instead of the adverbs less and more, we can also use the adjectives. So this might be the second structure, the plus the comparative adjective, okay, the comparative adjective here with the noun, okay, with the noun, and here we take the close, okay, we take the close, and this is the first, the first part or the first close, and next part, the equivalent part again should be the plus the comparative, the comparative adjective plus the noun plus the close. So this is another possible case. So let me study. For example, the less, uh, the less I know her, uh, the less I know her, uh, the better, maybe. So sometimes we can stop using only the first clause. Okay, only the first clause still shows the parallelity or the the double structure. Okay. So we can also use the comparative adjective. Uh, say, the, the, earlier, the earlier I come, okay, the earlier I come, uh, the earlier I get everything. So you can use comparative adjective or you can use less more, the adverbs less and more. Now let's go back to our question. The dash you prepare for the exam, the dash mark you get. So anyways, we expect here, if this has to be simple degree, okay, this must also be simple degree because the structure is parallel. If we use comparative here, we have to use comparative here. Okay? The same structure repeats itself. When, if we use superlative here, we have to use superlative here. But more of the time, most of the time, we use the comparative form, okay, in both clauses. That's the case in double uh, comparison or double or parallel comparison. So let's look for, now let's go through the answer choices. Earlier, comparative form, based, superlative form. So this must be comparative form because the first structure is comparative. So due to that, we cancel this out. Now let's go to question, choice B. Earlier, comparative, good. This is a simple degree. So we don't use this structure. We have to use the same structure in both clauses. Early, that's simple. Based, that is superlative. So we don't take this one again. Earlier, comparative, better, comparative. That's our answer. So it is equivalent structure. In both cases, we use equivalent structure, so the answer is, uh, the answer is D. So when you read out the whole sentence, it treats out like this. The earlier you prepare for the exam, the better mark you get. That's how we do this question. Okay, let's continue to question number four. The teacher said to me, quote, why were you absent yesterday? Question mark, and we close the quote. The report to speech of this, now it is clear from the question that this question is taken from, or it is from the grammar aspect, which is called reported speech. In the case of reported speech, you know that uh, there are two ways that we can report what is spoken by somebody else. The first way is direct, and the second way to report what someone says or said or has said is the indirect way. What does this mean? When we, do, when we report what someone says indirect, in, indirectly, it means we take the exact words, the exact words of the speaker to show that in written form, we put it in a quotation mark, okay, in inverted comma. The speaker's word should be placed in uh, inverted commas, two inverted commas, to show that what is 
inside the quotation mark is not ours, but it is somebody else's. And the other way to report is indirectly, okay? Or in a report or dispute form. So indirectly, when we report what someone says indirectly, it means we use our own expressions, our own ways of conveying the message. So this is the difficult part, okay? When we, we have to take care when we report using indirect speech because in indirect speech, as I said, it is using our own ways that we report somebody else's statement. But when we do so, uh, we have to take care of some things. Okay, there are changes that we might apply here. Okay, what are those changes? Okay, what are those changes? The change, expected change, there are about four grammatical expected change. The first one is tense. The second one is pronoun. The third one is adverb. And the fourth one is expression change. Okay, the expression change is expected. Now, the question is, do we always apply a tense change when we report? The answer is no. We don't always apply a tense change because to do or to apply a tense change, the first thing that we have to consider is the reporting verb. Okay, the, the verb in the reporting clause. Okay, the verb in the reporting clause. If the verb in the reporting clause, okay, is in is stated in past. Timur. Uh, in order to apply a tense change, we have to see the verb in the reporting clause. Is the verb in the reporting clause is present tense or future tense, whatever the future form or the present form, we don't apply a tense change. Okay? So to apply a tense change, the, the verb in the reporting clause should be in past tense. Okay? The verb, the verb in reporting clause. Should be past tense, okay? Should be past in order to apply a tense change. So we don't apply a tense change all the time. In order to apply a tense change, we have to see the verb in the reporting clause and must be or should be past tense. Otherwise, we don't apply a tense change. And the other, we apply a pronoun change, okay? Pronouns which are uh, which are expressed or stated in first. First person singular plural uh, should or second person has to be changed to third person singular and plural. And adverbs, both adverb of time, okay, and adverb of place uh, that shows uh, nearness has to be changed to indicate farness or remoteness, okay. For example, adverb of time like uh, now in the speaker's word has to be changed to then when we report, okay? Adverbs used in the speaker's word, like yesterday, okay, has to be changed to the day before, okay? The day before, the day before. Let me shorten it, before. And adverbs like tomorrow, okay? Time adverbs like tomorrow has to be changed to the following day etc okay etc so adverb of time that shows nearness has to be changed to indicate farness or remoteness so this side adverbs used in direct and this side are adverbs that are used in indirect speech and adverb of place like here used in direct speech have to be changed to there when we report so both adverb of time and adverb of place has to be change to indicate farness, okay, farness. And we have to apply expression change, okay, depending on the context, if it is a question, we have to use words like asked, inquired, wanted to know, etc. Such expressions has to be changed, used. If it is uh, an exclamation, for example, we might use exclaimed, admired, adored, astonished, etc. So expression change is expected change among expected changes. So these four changes 
always or usually we apply these four changes if we are using the second way of reporting, indirect way of reporting. So now let's see our given sentence. It says or it reads out, the teacher said to me, this is the reporting clause, as you can see. This is the reporting clause up to the comma is the reporting clause. And said is a verb in the reporting clause. That's the verb that we have to see to apply a tense change. Okay. Now, as you can see, said is past tense. So now it is possible to use uh, to apply a tense change because the verb, the verb in the reporting clause is in past tense. If it were present or future, we don't apply a tense change. But now we do because said is past. So when we report this sentence, we have to apply a tense change. What does tense change mean? If the speaker's word is stated in present form, in simple present form, when we report, we have to take it one step back and change it to simple past. When the, report, when the speaker's word is, uh, is in present continuous tense, and we change it to past continuous tense when we report. So always take one step back, the speaker's word in tense, if the verb in the reporting clause is past tense when we report. Good. Now let's proceed. Pronoun change is expected. As I said, first person singular and plural uh, pronouns or second person pronouns should be changed to third person singular or plural depending on the pronoun used in the question. And adverb. Now let's see. So the, the word in the quotation mark is the speaker's word. It reads out, why were you absent yesterday? So it's an interrogative statement, and it's, we have two cases to reporting interrogative statement based, based on the answer it needs. Now our particular sentence needs full answer. So whenever we uh, come across a, a direct speech, a statement which needs a, an interrogative statement which needs full answer we use a question word whatever the question word used in this in the given sentence should be used as conjunction okay so, so the conjunction in our case is why the question word because this question needs full answer okay this question needs full answer why were you absent yesterday i was absent because blah, blah. so the answer we need full answer for interrogative questions that needs full answer we use a question word given as conjunction to connect the reporting clause with the speaker's word later on but if it were for example if the question were a question that needs yes or no answer the conjunctions would be uh, whether or if okay we use the word if or the word whether to connect the reporting clause with the speaker's word, okay? But in our case, as you can see, it's an interrogative statement that needs full answer, so we use the given question word to connect the two clauses. Uh, for the rest type of statements, for example, if the statement is a declarative statement, we use that as conjunction, okay? We use the word that to connect the two clauses if the speaker's word is declarative statement. Whether it is negative declarative statement or positive declarative statement, we use the word that to connect the reporting clause with the speaker's word. If the speaker's word is an exclamatory sentence, we use the word used to exclaim. Okay, the exclamatory word would be used to connect the two clauses. If it might be what, for example, if I say she said what a beautiful day. In this case, now what a beautiful day is an exclamatory statement. What is the word which is used to exclaim? So we use the word what to connect the two clauses. Okay, so for exclamatory statements, we use the exclamatory word to connect the two clauses. For questions which are, I mean, for statements which are ordered or imperative statements, we change to infinitive. Okay. We change to infinitive. For example, if I say, she said, shut the door. And when we report the sentence, we say, she told me to shut the door. So we change it to infinity. Now, let's go back to our question. As you can see, it is full answer. Our question word would be why. Now, let's apply. Fortunately, 
we have to apply all the four chains all the four chains in our case so the here it is a say because it is a say now when we report it's a question so we use the word ask or wanted to know or inquired so the word inquired now when you see the choices the answer choice all the other choices used the word asked or the verb asked so in this respect all are correct so we take ask the teacher asked whom me okay again in the case of the pronoun they are the same all are correct in the case of pronoun now the next issue would be the conjunction okay the conjunction as i said uh, it is a question that means full answer so i have to use the, the word why why is used here why is used here why is used here so we have to cancel out answer choice b because the conjunction used is that which we use for declarative statement now we cancel this out so the rest would be all to be compared now the next thing would be uh, the tense change okay how do we apply the tense change as you can, as you can see it is the speaker's uh, the speaker's word I mean, the statement of the speaker's word is stated by past simple, as you can see, where are you? So when we change this, we have to take it one step back so it becomes past perfect and we use had been, okay? Had been, we have to take it one step back. Now, here it says was, so we cancel this out. Now, we cancel two answer choices, left with two more see why were you absent as you can see it is indirect question and we don't need question mark all we need is period because it is an indirect question look here it is ended by question mark so again we cancel this out so you can apply technical uh, issues here so just because of the question mark we cancel this out we don't consider the other cases now let's see answer choice D now the conjunction is Y here as you can see it, it has changed the verb to past perfect had been absent and the time the time close I mean the time phrase which says that uh, sorry which says yesterday in the speaker's word is changed to the day before which is true in all case and which is also true in answer choice D so that's our answer so when we report the sentence which reads out why were you absent yesterday we say the teacher asked why I have been absent the day before or the pre the previous day and it should end by period or full stop okay that's our answer now let's go to question number five so that one is a good speaker does he also writes very well now what is missing here is conjunction as you can see what is missing here is conjunction uh, in lower grades you have learned uh, that there are two types of conjunctions correlative and coordinating conjunctions but now in the higher level uh, grammarians have uh, categorized conjunctions into four okay into four the first one we call them cumulative cumulatives okay all conjunctions that show additions okay an idea additions of idea over an idea are categorized under cumulatives to accumulate means to store so conjunctions like and and all conjunctions that have equivalent meaning with and like also as well as in addition to etc are categorized under this group okay and that's the first group the second group of conjunction is uh, adverse alternative so alternative let me just put them in order alternatives okay alternatives are the second group of conjunctions as the name indicates to alternate means to choose from or it shows options so all conjunctions that shows options are categorized under this the chief word that shows option is or we can also use either or neither nor otherwise etc are categorized under this and the third group 
which we call adversative adversatives okay adversatives to advert means to oppose or to stand against so adversative conjunctions show oppositions contrast all conjunctions that show oppositions are categorized under this the chief conjunction here is the word but and all words which have equivalent meaning with but are categorized under this like also so even so uh, despite, in spite of the fact that, despite the fact that, in spite of the fact that, etc., are categorized under this. And the force, and the force, uh, the force uh, category of conjunctions is what we call in lattice, okay? The lattice are the force group of conjunctions which shows uh, deduction or conclusions like therefore. Hence, uh, thus, etc. Such uh, conjunctions are categorized under uh, illatives. So we have four groups of conjunction. Now, let's determine which kind of conjunctions uh, that we are looking for in the missing part, which keeps the flow of the idea of the sentence. Okay? And the so sentence reads out, Solomon is a good speaker, Dash, he also writes very well. Now, personally, if you ask me, there is a redundancy of using conjunctions here. In the question itself, there is one conjunction which shows, which reads out also in the second clause, which makes uh, the, the, the conjunction in the missing part less important. So we can take out or we can even use comma here because we have here two independent clauses. Salomon is a good speaker, one independent clause. He also writes very well, another independent clause. So we can avoid using any word conjunctions. Instead, we can use comma or semicolon to connect these two sentences, okay, to two independent clauses, okay? Yes. So the if we have to use a conjunction, uh, we have to use conjunctions that show additions, which is from accumulative conjunction groups, okay? Uh, so words which have equivalent meaning with also or and can be used in the missing part. In addition, is one of the conjunctions that shows addition. Consequently, is, an, is, is a conjunction that shows deduction or conclusion or a result which we categorize under the fourth group of conjunction, which is called e lattice. And however, it shows contrast, so we categorize under adversative. Thus, it shows con uh, conclusion or a result which we categorize under therefore. So these two are in the same group. Okay, they are categorized under in that, but we don't need in that conjunctions here. What we need is a conjunction that shows addition of idea over an idea. So, however, is a contrast. So we take this out again. So we take both this consequently and thus take out, and we omit this out too. So we use addition. But if you ask me personally, this this answer choice, the given answer choice, are not necessary because we can easily connect these two independent clauses using only commas. Only commas. If there were a comma in the answer choices, I would prefer comma or semicolon for that matter. Semicolon can also be one conjunction to connect two independent clauses. Now we just hold on the question, so we use the given answer choices. So among the given answer choices, the best one is in addition because it shows addition, okay? I said no necessary of word conjunction here because it shows redundancy here. Also, also shows addition. So if you use another conjunction here, it's redundancy. There's a problem, a, a sentence problem, what we call redundancy. So we have to avoid using word conjunction instead punctuation marks are in a field. Anyways, in addition is our answer. And let's proceed to question number six. Last question of first part. If you don't mind, I dash finish my coffee before we leave. The answer choice is given. Would have, would rather, would like, and would. 
Now, where is this question from? From which grammar aspect is this question from? In order to determine, we have to see the part which is found before or after the blank space. As you can see, after the blank space, we have here a verb finish. Okay, a tense verb finish. It's a first form of the verb. Okay, it's a first form of the verb, which makes uh, which determines the form of the verb that comes in the missing part or in the blank space. Again, this question is uh, from conditional clause. As you can see, we have three types of conditions. Okay, uh, condition here, and we have two clauses, if clause, because the chief word is if, we name the clause if clause, and the other clause is the main clause. Okay. The other clause is the main clause. What would be okay the structure in these two clauses if the condition is the first condition? Okay, if the condition is the first condition, the tense structure that is used here should be simple present. Okay, simple present in the if clause and simple future. In the main clause has to be applied. By the way, the tense change we apply here, or the tense type that we apply in if clause in main clause, has nothing to do with the time. Okay, it shows the probability, improbability, or the impossibility of the condition. Okay, we change the tense, we vary tenses, not to show time, but to show the improbability, in, uh, the probability or the impossibility of the condition. So the first condition, the other name, which as I say is probable, the second condition, which we call improbable, and the third condition we call impossible. Or sometimes some books may call it the first one, real, okay, real condition, the second one, unreal condition, and the third one, impossible condition. I prefer this name, by the way, because it exactly uh, expresses the condition, okay? Now, what if what is the structure in the second clause? I mean, in the second condition, when the condition is unreal, okay? When the condition is unreal, uh, the, the tense type used in the if clause would be past simple here, okay? Past simple here, but here conditional clause, which means would plus the first form of the verb would be used. For the third condition, okay, for the third condition, for impossible condition, okay, we apply uh, past perfect here, okay, past perfect here, but perfect conditional in the main clause, which means would have uh, plus the third form of the verb would be applied to indicate the impossibility of the condition. Now, which condition is our case? In our case, let's go back to our question. If we don't mind, now as you can see, don't mind is a verb, a tense verb, which shows the present, the present time, so it's a present verb. So we expect in the main clause either future, if it is, uh, uh, if it is the first condition, okay, we expect simple future, but now, as you can see, the verb after the black space, it is the first form of the verb. So, this question is not from the basic structure, okay? This is a basic structure of conditions, uh, the basic structure of condition, conditional clause. So, the question is not from the basic structure of conditional clause, but it is what we call the variation rule, okay? We have variation rule of condition variation rule of condition in this case we can apply present simple in both clauses in order to show immediate action or if it is a fact we can apply simple present tense in both clauses okay as you can see we have a simple present tense verb here finish so now the other case that we see here is the meaning is, uh, it's a choice, okay, it's a choice. If you don't mind, so the speaker here is uh, indicating or expressing his or her choice, preference 
of doing things. So the speaker is comparing two things, either to have coffee or leave. Two actions are compared here. Two actions are presented to be preferred. So the action prefers, okay, to, to finish the coffee, not to leave first. To first to finish the coffee, then to leave. Now, which conjunction or which word shows choice, okay, choice? So it is away from the basic structure. So now let's see that shows choice. Would have doesn't show choice. So choice, okay, to indicate choice, we have two options, two types of uh, verb phrases like would rather, okay, would rather plus had better, okay, had better. These two expressions usually show preference plus the first one indicates not only preference, it also shows advice. If I say, if someone says I'm sick, I might say you had better see a doctor. Had better see, look, had better see. So after these two expressions, after these two expressions, the first form of the verb is used, okay? The first form of the verb is used. And as you can see, after the blank space, what is used is the first form of the verb, which indicates that it's a preference, okay? So the speaker is preferring uh, to finish the coffee than leaving. So we use would rather, okay? Would rather instead of the other uh, set, the other expressions. But C is also to be compared with like is also a possible answer. But what is missing here is after would like, what we expect is the preposition to plus the first form. If it were to, now we, these two can be possible answers. So we take this out only because it doesn't include the preposition to part because the first form verb, the first form is here. So what's missing is the preposition. Due to that, we can set this up. And this is not the correct structure. It is for conditional type two. So our only answer would be would rather because it shows preference. We'll proceed to question number six. That's the next part. Next. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now question number seven. I think teacher Chala Dash in this school since 1990 or maybe earlier. As I said before when we start the question, uh, doing the question, whenever you see a question first you have to see or you have to determine where, uh, the, which grammar aspect this question is from in order to determine that. See the structure carefully the, before or after the blank space. I think the teacher, I think teacher Chala Dash in this school since since 1990 or maybe earlier so this time phrase shows us that the action does the point of time the, the action whatever the action maybe in this blank space uh, started so it's a point of time 1990 is a point of time the action started so if an action starts from some point of time in the past and comes up to the present. I said up to the present because the main verb in the main clause is think and it is stated in simple present tense. So an action started from some point of time in the past and which comes up to the present is expressed by present perfect. Okay? One of the actions that present perfect expresses is an action which started from uh, some point of time in the past and which comes up to the present. This is the first case. Action started some time in the past and comes up to the present. This is the first case that present perfect is used. The second case that we use present perfect for is for an action which has started and completed in the past but whose effect is still going on. Action started and completed in past 
about whose effect still going okay, going on is expressed using present perfect. So which action is this one? Our particular sentence is the first action. So it started from some point of time, 1990 or maybe earlier, and up to the moment which is dealt about it is okay. So it started from some point of time and comes up to the present. So we use present perfect. So the structure of present perfect is to use uh, so as a sentence to the subject, and auxiliary verb has or have, and we use the third form of the verb. So we use a third, the has with third person singular, he, she, it. If the subject is he or she or it, we use has. If the, verb, the, the subject is first person singular, I, first person plural, we, and second person plural, you, and third person they, we use have. So I have, we have, you have, they have, but he has, she has, it has. Now, as you can see, I think teacher Jala. Jala is, teacher Jala is our subject for the verb here. Okay, the missing verb here. So it is third person singular. So the auxiliary verb that we prefer should be has. And the main verb has to be uh, changed to past participle. That's the past participle of the third form of the verb. Teach is taught. So has taught is our answer. Okay, has taught is our answer. So the first one is present perfect, the second one is consistent, is teaching. So consistent is used to show an action which is going on or taking place as we speak, or an action which is in progress in general is expressed using present consistent. So answer choice C is stated by present simple, teach for he, she, it, we add S or ES to the end of the verb to indicate the action is simple and present. So this is simple present verb. So a present simple expresses an action which now takes place. And taught is a simple past form, an action which expresses, a, or I mean a verb that I mean a tense that expresses an action in the past. Okay, it has nothing to do with the present time. So we take this all out and we prefer only the present perfect form because this action uh, is from some point of time in the past up to the present. So we use the present perfect to express it. Next question, question number eight. I enjoyed reading the story. It was rather sad, Dutch. I enjoyed reading the story. He enjoyed reading the story. I was rather sad. Now let's compare these two things, two verbs. He enjoyed and being sad, okay? Now this is the state. A person who enjoys a story is not expected to be sad, but you now what happened is the opposite, as you can see, it was rather sad. So it's a contrast of the second clause, is a contrast for the first one. If so, we use contrast in conjunctions, like also, though, but, which we have seen previously in the category of what we call adversative conjunctions, okay? Adversative Conjunctions, adversities like but, so, uh, also, even so, despite, in spite of, in spite of, however, okay, however. Even if, even if, even then, even then, etc., can be used for contrast. But contrasting conjunctions generally are categorized into two. The first one we call them introductories. Introductories. The second one we call them connectors. Connectors. We call them introductors because they always introduce conjunction. I mean, uh, introduce a concession clause. 
uh, we call some of the adversatives or adversative conjunctions connectors because they always come between the two clauses. Now what missing here is an, a conjunction that comes at the end. Okay, some uh, adversative conjunctions come at the end. The usual place of conjunctions or adversative conjunctions is either at the beginning or in the middle or at the end. It comes at the end. Now let's see all the choices. Now again, the, the, there is also structural differences between or uh, among the conjunctions. That's not the case here. Okay, I don't, I don't have to go further here. This is simple. I mean, this is enough. Now let's see the choices. Also is a conjunction which we have already categorized and accumulated because it shows addition. But is a conjunction that shows contrast. So is the conjunction that shows result, which we categorize under illative group, okay, illatives, okay. So is the conjunction which is used in contrast. Now, what makes this question difficult is we have two uh, conjunctions, possible conjunctions used in contrast clause, but and so. The others are not to be compared because also it shows addition, so it shows result. What we need in the question is a conjunction that shows contrast because enjoying in sadness has to be con contrasted. So, which one do we use? But is a conjunction, okay, in contrast clause, but it is always used between the two clauses, so we categorize it under connector. And it is usually marked off by semicolon and comma, or usually marked off by comma in punctuation speaking. So it is a connector, usually comes between the two clauses. Whereas, though is an introductory, okay? Though is an introductory, okay? An introductory, it either comes at the beginning of the sentence or at the end of the sentence, okay? So, in our case, the missing part is the end, so we prefer ZO. By the way, this is also the American's use of ZO, okay, in concession clause. Especially in oral communication, they use, okay, the Americans use ZO at the end, okay? So when we, when we read out this sentence, it reads up like this. I enjoyed reading the story, it was rather sad ZO. So ZO is a contrasting conjunction which usually comes either at the beginning of the sentence or at the end of the sentence. In this case, at the end, so we prefer ZO over but because but is a connector and always or usually comes between the two clauses, okay? That's why we prefer ZO over but, okay? Let's continue to question number nine. I am a hardworking person in the organization. I hope does the promotion. This question is uh, like the question we have seen with the verb avoid in the previous section. So the question here is what kind of verb pattern follows the verb hope? Is it gerund, is it participant or infinitive? We have all here as you can see, okay? We have all except choice B which we automatically omit out because it doesn't fit the structure. The rest can be compared, okay? So what kind of verb pattern do we use after hope? After hope, we use infinitive, okay? We use infinitive with the preposition to, okay? We use infinitive with the preposition to. In the previous section, if you remember, we have seen one verb, avoid, which is always followed by gerund. Now, another verb, which we find the list of verbs that are always followed by infinitive, you can find hope in that list of verbs. So hope is in that group, should always be followed by infinitive with the preposition to. So our answer is two gates. Fear, forgetting, for is used here, still or yet is not the answer because it is a German form here. Here, in is used, preceded Preceding the gerund, this is also gerund, this is also gerund. What we look for is infinitive and it is answer choice again. So, so, so that's our answer. Question number 10, the last question for this part. Does they have been waiting in line 
all the night, I was sure they would get tickets. Dash, they have been waiting in line all the night. I was sure they would get tickets. Here it says the main clause says, I was sure they would get tickets. Dash, they have been waiting in line all the night. Now, let's see the answer choices, the given answer choices. As so, though, B, because of, C, since, D, until. So what kind of conjunctions do we need? Again, the missing part is conjunction. As you can see from the answer choices, the missing part is a conjunction. But the question is, what kind of conjunctions should we use? Conjunctions that shows addition, conjunctions that shows reason, conjunctions that shows time, conjunctions that shows manner. Which conjunction do we use in this place? To see, let's see, the main clause reads out, I was sure they would get tickets. Why was I sure that they would get ticket? Is because they had been waiting in line all the night. Either it is a reason or it is a result. Okay, okay. So here we use, as you can see, it's a reason. Okay, it is a reason. For that case, in, th in this case, we have two answer choices that serves reason or that shows reason. Answer choice B and answer choice C shows reason, okay? They show reason. As ZO is a conjunction which we use in adverbial clause of minor, okay? Adverbial clause of minor because it shows minor, okay? Because it shows minor. For example, you might say, uh, she is acting as though she is a director of the school which means she's not a director actually, but she's acting as one, as though, shows minor. And here, until is a conjunction, which we use in time close, that shows that some action is happening uh, from point of time up to some point, within two, limit, two time intervals, so until some given time. So it, it is used in time close, okay? In time close used used in time clause now the the case in the since is also okay we can use since in time clause okay in time clause as well as in reason clause reason clause okay in reason clause when we use it in reason clause it means because when we use it in time clause, it means from some point of time up to some point uh, up to some point of time. So it has the same meaning with until when it is used in time clause. But now, instead of its time issue, now we are dealing with its expressing reason. Okay, so we have two possible answers: because of or since, because this here is express reason. Now, the next thing that we have to choose these two from, so we have to cancel out answer choice A because it is for minor clause, answer choice D because it is for time clause. What we need is a conjunction for reason. And we have two answer choices, possible answer choices because of and since. Now, the next thing is the structure which is used with since and because of. With because of, the immediate structure, expected immediate structure with because of is noun phrase, okay? Noun phrase. Whereas the immediate structure after since is close or subject verb structure, okay? Subject verb structure. Now, let's see the structure after the blank space. Dash, they had been waiting. Look, we have subject and for structure we have a close after the black space which forces us to choose since over because of. because because of has to be followed by what noun phrase so the structure after the black space is not noun phrase it is a close so we prefer or we choose since instead of because of so we can't so since